I happened to notice this time that my that the video had stopped recording a little bit earlier than I did last time so whilst the camera hasn't been switched on I just whizzed round the bottom of the cow and up to this back corner so we'll carry on again now with the camera switched on so we're going to go up here let me just remember to keep your, your pattern by the side so you can see what you're doing we're going to go down here and put in the shape of this ear okay so down we go I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second because I don't want to get caught up. So we kind of want to drop down and then back up kind of by here. So I'm just following that line down. Okay, so next what we need to do is get that back in. So it can really be positioned anywhere along here. It's just so he, so he looks like a nice cow. I don't know if you can hear me okay because it's chucking it down with rain and I'm, I'm sewing in the conservatory and then the... the the roof is very noisy, so I'll, I'll try and speak up for you. Okay, so we're just going to jump down, so lift it up and slide it across, and we're going to go around this shape. Okay, and my it's just hit the side of the machine there, so I'm going to turn it around so that we're got a nice free space to work again. going to do now at this point is we're just going to have a go at getting that eye in so what I tend to do is at this point just have a go and just get that outline so you can kind of if you if you're very unhappy about just going for it and putting the eye in then you could trace the pattern put a pin in and help position you know, stab him stab him in the eye with a pin and overlay it you know, lift it up, put the pin, and that'll help you mark. You can use a bit of chalk, draw it in. But I tend to, I tend to not worry about it too much. So we're just going to put in basic shape of the eye. Okay, and that's all the the level of detail I'm going to do at this point. Okay, so we'll just trim this down. Let's do the eye there and then I can kind of ponder it a little bit and see whether I think it's in the right place because we can I tend to do quite a bit of embroidery round eyes mainly just to kind of help me position them so. okay so I think what we need to do now is change our thread and I think we'll just do some easy bits so we'll do a bit of shading on some of the um, cream areas so we're going to be changing over to a cream thread okay so I'm going to change for the cream thread. I actually am going to bother. I'm very usually very lazy, and I don't tend to change my bobbin over very frequently at the bottom. But oh, just dropped another. There we go. But if it's a light colour thread, then I tend to go for a quick change. So in it goes. Am I going to use that nice variegated one? Whatever I put it. So I'm going to use this one here, which I could I could do with getting a new one. So it's getting a bit low. So now this is the time that you are going to run the risk of tension problems because you probably got your machine going okay with your brown and you've been merrily sewing away with the same thread. And now we're going to start changing threads left, right, and centre. And at some point, you are going to thread your machine up wrong. It happens happens all the time. I used to hate changing my thread. I used to sew 
I used to just sew in brown all the time and be just, just so I didn't have to have the risk of mucking it up. But it is nice to have different colour threads and it adds a lot more detail than you could get in otherwise. So just take your time, thread it up properly, make sure it gets through this top tensioner wheel and make sure when you change your bobbin thread over that you haven't accidentally caught it up. Or um, I have some bobbins of which have to go in certain ways. They're not supposed to, there's nothing that says that they're supposed to go in a certain way but I have found if I put them in back to front they don't like it and they stick and then you start getting you know um, the top thread going through to the bottom so um, the other thing is once we're starting to change thread you might find that some of these threads are thicker so this one particularly is because it's a hand quilting thread it's a bit thicker and you're supposed to really use a bigger needle with it but I don't like to use a bigger needle I use a, an 80 for, for all my sewing just a standard embroidery needle. If you use a bigger needle it's got to make a bigger hole and when you're sewing near the edges of fabric which can fray it, it doesn't help. So what I do is I turn my tension down so normally I sew on four so my machine goes between one and nine so for this one I'm going to start off at two and I'll just keep an eye on it and if I think it's starting to get a bit loose on the top I'll tighten it up if it um, starts feeling like it's tugging a little bit because the tension is too high then I'll turn it down. Okay, so I think what we'll do first is we're going to do a little bit of embroidery around the horns. I am making this up as I go along, so this is why I'm, there might be a little bit more umming and ahhing than I normally would. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of try and do a little bit of shading back and forth here. So it's, it's there's no real right or wrong, just have a go. Okay. Oh, and remember to cut that thread off before we embroider over it. So I find on this kind of thing, if you if you can do curved lines, pretty much curved lines, or if you're trying to do wildlife, a few things in, in nature are straight, so give it a nice curve. And I'm going to go over and do the same thing on this one. And we'll do, stick to the same side, because we're kind of trying to suggest the light's coming from a certain direction. So you want to be consistent. And here that your variegated thread really does kind of help out because we're going to make this it's going to make it look a lot more complicated than we actually did okay so that's that bit done so we're going to add a little bit over here now so over to his ear and we're just going to make his ears look a bit hairy and so i've just gone round kind of the well the outside of his ear and then we're going to just sneak around and we're going to give him a bit of ear hair going on. And we're probably going to do this in another colour, so don't do too much. Okay, and the next thing we're going to go along the back and give them, they have kind of, cows have a bit of a ridge here, so we're going to kind of try and shade that in a little bit. So, so you're giving it, you're giving it give a little bit of a, a gap between the top. top you know brown here so we want let me see this. you want this dark line here we want a little bit of space so don't sew all the way up to there because then we'll we're just that'll help keep this bit lighter here so we'll just fill in a little bit around here could actually just continue a little bit into that black bit as well might be nice because you do get a little bit of different color fur going on as they change color okay so anywhere else let's go down to the bottom next so we'll just do it you just do a couple of stitches just to kind of secure it before we move over don't worry about all these ends we'll sort them later just try and make sure that you don't you, you, there's enough slack in it so you've not got the bottom thread too tight otherwise you can start sewing in whatnot and you know puckers and things so we're just going to shade this little bit here so this is kind of where his, you know his chest bones are coming in like so and then again around the jawline so to kind of highlight this jaw and, and make that look 
So we're going to again do the same thing. So don't sew, don't sew right up to here. We're going to kind of do a second line and shade a little bit here. Okay. Okay, so that just kind of helps highlight that bit there. And we're going to go around and we're going to do the same thing over here. Now this time, this one really, this one is a more of a, a shadow. So we're going to go right up to the edges here rather than trying to highlight. And then that'll help bring out this nose area as well. Okay, so I think something we're going to do now is we're just going to start to draw in that nostril. So, remember, you can trace it, you can draw it, you can use pins, or you can just go for it. It's up to you. So I'm just going to draw out where I think this nostril is, so we can add more detail in. I'm going to be adding more colours, but let's, let's just get a start. A little bit. I'm gonna. Oh, missed move the camera there. Sorry. You know, I've just I've just checked checked in here, and you can see how untidy my my desk is. Like the shame. Normally, I zoom in a little bit more. See if I can zoom in, and you can't see all the mess again. Have a look. <laughs> there we go. So you can't tell how messy my desk is now. Dear me. I've got toys and everything on it. I cleared like the the tiniest little area, but. So it looked like I was already neat and I'm not. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to, the, you, and pretty much on all animals, you, you, there's a kind of shading that you can do between the eye and the nose. And so we're just going to put in a little bit of that and then that kind of brings out that kind of bridge here. So we're just going to add in a little bit here. I think that's probably all we'll do in this thread for now. I may well put this back on again, but well, what I want, what I really could do with at this point, you see, is just trimming some of these threads because otherwise we're going to start going over areas that we don't want to. Because then we'll have to try and pick them all out, and that's a pain. So I can see one I've done there. Okay, so I think we could do with getting some of that curling this in. There we go. That's looking quite nice. Looking a bit more detailed really. So I think we want a slightly darker thread. So here you go. And I, I said that I was going to use, I showed you all the threads I'm going to use and then I've just randomly picked a different one up off my messy desk. So i put away that cream one. So this one is quite a nice, it's quite a nice one. It's a funny one really. Sometimes on variegated ones you get quite a mix. This one's kind of, it's quite sandy browns, and I think the actual name of it, you know, whether they, they give it a title is sand, but it, occasionally it's got kind of a green and greys in it. It's quite interesting. So we're going to thread up. This one's another the thick one, so I won't need to worry about changing the tension because I've got the same brand. So you get in the back of my hand there, aren't you? Okay. So we're going to add some nice curls and give this cow a nice curly bit. So. Just secure it a little bit first, and then we'll get that thread cut down. Okay, so we're just going to do wiggles, really. doing anything particularly clever and you know it's just you're just kind of colouring in and a bit of texture when people look at these things they kind of fill in a lot of the stuff with imagination so you're just giving them somewhere to start 
Okay, we're going to add, since I've got this one on, we're going to add a little bit in this ear and just make it a little bit darker. So don't go as far as you did before, just, just a little bit. Okay. And same as we'll go over to the nostril and we'll add in another, a little bit darker there as well. Start building up these layers really. Okay, I think that's probably enough. Actually, no, we're gonna go gonna go around and do a little bit of eye detail. So on cows, they have that kind of they have kind of a white bit there, don't they, at the bottom there, you can see. Now I'm happy with the position of the eye. I don't think I need to sew it too differently. So we'll just give a I'm gonna go around the outside of my stitching. There's a tendency when you do eyes is to do them too small, so. There we go, like so, and I'll, um, we're going to need to put the white of the eye in, but I don't think we need to do that just yet. Okay, so change the thread again. Okay. I've just, I've not got anywhere, I just switched the camera on and off because it appears that my camera goes to sleep, so that's what the problem is. So there's probably some setting in it that I need to press, but I haven't worked it out yet. So we'll just every now and again stop and start so that it doesn't start snoozing on us. Right, what colour thread next shall we use? Let's get some pinks going, I think. And I think this is going to be one of those things of kind of less is more, so we don't really... I don't think we want to go charging off with the pinks around here. Because really, cows aren't... you don't look at a cow and think, oh gosh, that's a pink cow, do you? But I think if we don't put the pink in, it'll look a bit dull. So, oh, I've got to show you. I'm using another of the Superior Threads King Toot, and this time in a, a pink, which really is a little bit. It's a, it's a very baby girl pink, so we're going to have to be careful. We don't use too much of it. I'm going to put a little bit up in the ears. Let's thread down. in a little bit of a bit round the nose I'm wondering whether we should put any more along the bottom edge of her mouth I think we won't I think it'll make him. We'll, I think we'll run the risk of looking like we've got a cow with lipstick on. We'll just play it safe. Okay. Now I've got this apricot one here. I'm debating whether we need it or not. It's a brand new thread. I've never used this one before. It is helpful if you have a lot of different colour threads. I seem to. Have, I can't say that I particularly use a brand or anything. I like. I do like certain ones for the quilting threads, but that's mainly because I use them for hand quilting. Uh, quite like I buy from the quilt shop that I buy from has got um, Wonderfill in stock. So when I buy fabric, I tend to treat myself and get a new reel of one of their variegated ones. So I kind of I've been building my collection. Okay, so let's just put in. Just a touch of this apricot. I'll have to watch out the tension there because it might need to go up a little bit. Now you have to watch out around here because we're starting to get quite a lot of colours going on. So what you can find is it... Oh, I forgot to cut that off there. So it starts lifting. So something to check. Your needle should be in the centre of your foot. And these are, they're very easy to come off, these. So every now and again, especially if you're sewing through something with quite a lot of layers, just give it a check. It's still in position. 
Okay, so I think all we really need to do now is the eye. So let's pick some browns for the eye. Okay, so I think what we'll do first is I'm going to put, oh actually I'm going to change my, I'm going to go in some dark colours now, so we're going to change that bobbin back for a darker one. So I was so frantically tidying, tidying, she said, oh, oh. pushing all the stuff out of the way so you couldn't see what a tip my desk is, that my bobbin's gone. Flying across. So here we go, put this dark one back in. And take this peach thread off the top. I do find on these things you get very good at threading your machine up quickly, fairly quickly. And it's just making sure every time you change, because... I don't think you'd know. I never have any problem when I'm sewing normally. Good tension. But free motion, it just really makes a. really picks up if you've done anything wrong. So, first off, we're going to get this dark thread going. So, this is a. It's a bit darker brown than I normally use. Okay, so we're just filling some of it and get that kind of shape going. So we're trying to go in a kind of circular kind of pattern really, so I'll turn my tension back up again. Get rid of that thread before we... You do get, when I do that, you get left with a very tiny little thing uh, end, but I tend to just sew over it, so... I've done there. Um, could do, I'm just going to come over here. I'm just going to pick out what I've got a brown on anyway. I'm just pick out a bit of that nostril, just one side. I don't want to. I don't really want to draw it any more than that because otherwise it will look too obvious. But I think that works okay. Okay, we need to put some highlights in that, but what I'm going to go on to now is a grey. Because we need to get some business going around this eye area. So here I've got a, a variegated grey, which I'm hoping isn't going to... Greys are kind of funny, either the brown or a bluey grey. Now this is a touch blue than I would have liked, but it's my best one I've got in. Me saying box, so we shall see how it goes. If it looks awful, then I'll stop and we'll sew over it with a different colour. And you don't need to buy special threads for these, it's just, in fact, I might use if we can get a nice colour for this, I might use this for some of the details on the eye because it's quite great. So, what we're going to do is very similar to how we did over here in the nose, and we're just going to kind of add a bit of suggestion of some of the, the kind of hair detail and more shapes so we're just going to go just round the top of that eyelid and just zigzagging a bit and I'm, I'm not filling it all in I think that'd be too much, but just something to give it a little bit more, a bit more detail. Yeah. So I've kind of done a bit like you do, you would like a peacock feather, I suppose. But you just kind of a bit of feathering around here. Can I see that you can see the way I'm pointing? Yeah. So a bit of feathering around here, and then coming out a little bit to kind of bring in line with this jaw there. I might do that a little bit more. Okay, and because it's variegated, it picks up some of it and hides other bits. Yes, I do quite like that thread, so I'm going to drop that into the eye a little bit, so to get some of that going. So there's this. You've got your kind of. I'm just going to do like a little curved section there. Cause that looks nice, doesn't it? Okay, so you can see. 
difficult when it's got all this detail in really. It's quite small areas to look at. Okay, right, so anything else that that needs? I think we'll go for one last... Oh dear, my, the, my bobbin holder just shot across the room there, you see I'm going so quickly. Right, so I'm just going to get, I think, a cream. I don't think we're going to go for white. Let's have a look. So either, either a cream or a grey. Let's have a look. Mm, not convinced. Nope, a little bit lighter than that. Yeah, let's go for that. Oh yeah, where did that go? Right, let's put it up here. Now I really should be good here and I should change the bottom bobbin thread for like three stitches. Yeah, I'm not, you know, you know me, I'm not going to do it. So if you're too lazy and you don't want to change the bottom bobbin thread, make sure you turn the tension of your upper thread down so that you're in no danger of bringing that thread up and making this light colour like darker and messy. So I'm just going to add in a tiny little detail. Oh, now this is thick so just again watch out, it hasn't gone anywhere. Okay, so I'll turn my tension down, I'm going to turn it down to two. And so slowly sew so through here. Okay. Put off your ends. Alright, anything else? I think the only bit that looks like it's missing is maybe a little bit over here on the forehead. So while we've got this cream on, I'm just going to put a little bit of shade in around here. Just to kind of bring out that brow a little bit, because cows do have quite noticeable brows. And you see, you can get away with the, with the lower tension there. It gives it more of a kind of hand-sewn look sometimes. I often do that on things like whiskers and things. But you don't have to worry about that for cows. Cows haven't got whiskers. Okay, well, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So we're just going to go and trim that down now. Okay, so I've given her a good press. And she's looking rather lovely. Just trim any loose bits. Now, they do fray. I can't say that they don't fray. I do two laps round. And if I know that it's going to be subjected to a good bit of wear, then sometimes I do a third go round. But otherwise, you do, you know, they are, they are going to fray if they get heavy wear. You know, or you wash it. or You know, I, I used to do... Well, I still I, I still do embroider my children's clothes and they've gone through the washing machine and, and for the majority of the time they, they hang together okay. But a lot of these kind of ones I you know, I have these as you know, war war hangings art type things, so not really for heavy uses. Right, I've trimmed this down. I've trimmed my green to seven point five inches by five point five across. I did actually lose a little bit of my cow on this side, so it's just center it up however you want, or you could do it slightly bigger if you want. But I was opting for making sure we definitely had enough cow for the picture, which we which we did. So I've just made it so that we've just caught ears and nose in, and I lost that side as my sacrifice. And then the felt I've cut at the back, so I've got a piece of felt here, and I've cut that seven and three quarter inches by five and three quarter inches. So we're just going to get, you know, an eighth of an inch all the way around the edge. If you want to um, if you want to put a hanger on then now is the time to do it before we sew it onto the backing because you can do it then by machine just do two little sleeves and then you can put a piece of dowel around it. What else? So I've changed my bobbin thread over to a cream because I'm using a cream felt and I don't want it to have a big black line on the bottom. You can sew this on how you want. I'm, I'm always looking for the easiest route so what I do is I leave the free motion foot on because I'm often doing a number of these at a time so it's easier for me just to keep on with the foot as opposed to having to set it all back up again for normal sewing so all I do is I position it the best I can and then I just whiz around the outside with a you know reasonably coordinating thread Now 
and I don't worry too much about it being ridiculously straight. I'm just trying to keep to that edge. I mean, it's probably good practice, really. Oh, I forgot to say, on the back, I'm going to leave this stabiliser on. If I wanted to, if I wanted it in a quilt, and I was going to be hand stitching, hand quilting it, then I'd use a different stabiliser. So you can get stabilisers which are more papery and they, you can tear them and they're much easier to get out because basically you kind of perforate them as you're sewing. Whereas this one you'd have to cut out. But it is, they are difficult to hand quilt through. I don't think it would make a lot of difference if you're machine quilting. It would be a little bit stiffer, but as you used it, it would, it would give a little. So for these little pictures like this, I just leave it in and it makes it, it makes the, the card a bit stiffer as well, especially with that felt on the back. So I, I trim, I trim any obvious threads down on the back, otherwise I leave it. It depends a little bit on what your background colour is. If your background colour is near white, and you've got a lot of dark threads then you really could do with getting rid of as many as possible just so you don't risk them showing through but this, this green is quite good at masking off so I just go around a second time You have a go at yours and have fun. Okay, and a quick look at the finished article. So, so here she is, in all her finest. So um, I think she looks rather nice. 